Pre-installation hardware considerations. In this video, we'll talk about choosing and evaluating the hardware needs for Linux installation. You have to choose hardware that's supported by Linux, and that's getting easier every day. And you also have to choose hardware that meets your needs and also stays within your budget. So let's get started. When you're considering what hardware to use for your system, you have to keep in mind the purpose of the system. Is it going to be a workstation or is it going to be a server? And, and for a workstation, what I'm talking about is a desktop computer, like something that you plug your monitor and your keyboard into and you work on it directly. Okay? It might have networking capabilities, but the point is most of your work is done right on that computer directly. And then there's a server, like a you know, web server, an email server. And these, you know, the, they're always interacted with over the network, whether it's a local area network or, or an internet or something like that. Okay? So, so a server, you, you never log on to directly unless you're like a system administrator and you need to do maintenance on it. You're always interacting with that through some program, like a web browser, an email client or something. And then you have to ask, what's your budget? And once you determine your budget for this computer, uh, then, then the game is you know, to get the best uh, system for your money for the particular purpose. And to do that effectively, you've got to prioritize. And for workstations, then probably the most important priority is good input and output devices. So you know, don't stamp on the keyboard and the monitor and stuff if somebody's going to be working on this computer eight hours a day in your office. Because any, any savings you make on the monitor or the keyboard or the mouse or whatever is just going to be counteracted because they're not going to be as productive if the monitor's small or if the monitor's blurry, they're going to get eye strain and they're not, they're not going to be able to work for as long hours, that kind of stuff. So, so the point is, you know, don't skimp on the most important part of the system, which for workstations is certainly good input and output devices at a bare minimum. And then there's servers, and for servers to undergo, you know, to handle a high load, they need to have fast processors, they need to have lots of memory, and they need to have large disks that can da uh, transfer data quickly. Okay, so, so like I said, this is a bare minimum requirements for these two settings. And for workstations, you know, if you're uh, doing scientific computations on your computer, then you'll need more than just good input and output devices. You'll probably need a fast processor and lots of memory, too. Or if you're hosting some large database application, you're, again, you're going to need more than good input and output devices. And then other considerations you have to weigh into this whole thing is just compatibility with the systems that are already in place. So if you're buying new, some new computer and it's cheap and you're saving money there, but it's not compatible with whatever's in place now, it's going to wind up costing you money because maybe you're going to have to buy new software for it because it can't use the software that you already have, that kind of stuff. And then you have to consider, is your support staff familiar with this stuff? Or are they going to have to take time off of work, you know, off of their regular duties to learn how to deal with this new system that you're getting? Even though that's cheaper, again, the bottom line here is money. And, and you know, if your support staff needs to go to some training course to deal with this new hardware that you, that you saved money on, is it really a savings then? And you just need to weigh out all of these things, especially if you're in a business environment. Now I want to talk about the hardware that's inside the standard personal computer these days and talk about the choices that are available for each hardware component. And the choices that we're going to talk about here are just generic choices, like uh, the different, uh, different choices for like the different technologies that are available for that device. And later we'll talk about the specific brand names that are supported by Linux. So first, we're, there's the motherboard. And this is the main board inside your computer. When I say board, I'm talking about a circuit board. And it's the main board just because practically everything else in your system plugs into the motherboard. And then there's the CPU, which just stands for the Central Processing Unit. Now the CPU or the Central Processing Unit, a lot of people call this the brain of your computer. And the reason they call it the brain is because every mathematical computation that's done on your computer is done inside the CPU. Every uh, logical operation or logical decision that's made by your computer is done in the Central Processing Unit. Then there's the memory, or the main memory, some people call it. Some people call it the RAM, which stands for random access memory. It's all the same stuff. The memory is what holds the active programs and the open files on your system. So if you have some file open in a word processor, that open file is in main memory. Uh, the, the program that runs the word processor, the code for that program is also in main memory. So basically everything that's running in your computer, the, the, the code for those programs are in main memory. All the files that are open are in main memory. And main memory is electronic storage, so it's really fast, but it also goes away when you turn off your computer. That's why when you've got that file in the word processor in main memory, you've got to save it out to hard disk before you turn off your computer, because when you turn your computer off, main memory is just wiped out. Okay, so, so when it, you save it out to disk, uh, the disks are magnetic storage, and magnetic storage lasts a very long time, even when the power's off. Okay, and so this is for long-term storage, for stuff that's not active on your system. The memory and the RAM, or the RAM is for short-term storage for the stuff that is active on your system right now. 
basically there's two choices for RAM. Uh, there's SIM, which stands for Single Inline Memory Module, and there's DIM, which stands for Dual Inline Memory Module. And there's variants of each of these, but basically these two are, are you know, this is the first classification for memory. Uh, it, it just depends on your motherboard which one of these you use. The motherboard's either going to have slots for SIM boards, or it's going to have slots for DIM cards, for memory cards. Okay, so it just depends on your motherboard, and later we'll talk about how you can determine uh, which memory cards your motherboard wants to have in it. And then there's disks, and disks, uh, there's basically two types of disks as well. There's EIDE disks, which stands for Enhanced Integrated Device Electronics, and then there's uh, SCSI disks, which stands for Small Computer System Interface. Generally, SCSI disks are faster than EIDE disks. They're also generally more expensive. So if you're just talking about your home computer, uh, EIDE disks might be the way to go because it's cheaper, and you know the, the performance of an EIDE disk could be perfectly fine for a home system. All right. Then for other stuff, there's uh, you know input devices, and certainly you're going to have a keyboard uh, and a mouse. You should probably have a three-button mouse for Linux because uh, there's n a number of operations in Linux, a number of interfaces that use all three mouse buttons. Okay, you can usually emulate that middle mouse button by clicking both mouse buttons on a two-button mouse, but you might as well save yourself the hassle and get a three-button mouse because they're, you know, like $9.99 or something. You know, they're not that expensive. Okay, so there's keyboards, mouse. There's also, uh, you know, video, or, I'm sorry, cameras and, and microphones and graphic tablets and all sorts of other things. And a lot of these things are supported by Linux. Uh, again, we'll, we'll talk later about the various brands of each thing that, that is supported, and I'll show you where you can find out all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's network devices like network cards and, and uh, modems and things like that. Uh, generally, network cards are Ethernet cards. Most networks that you're going to hook up to nowadays are Ethernet networks. And, you know, 99% of all Ethernet cards are supported by Linux. So that's, that's one where Linux has nearly full coverage. Uh, Linux has support for older networks, like if, you have some, if you're on some local talk network, uh, I guess I'd be kind of surprised if you're on some local talk network, but if you are on some local talk network, there is cards and device drivers for Linux to make your Linux computer work on that local talk network. Uh, then there's video uh, stuff like monitors and video cards. Pretty much every monitor will work with Linux. You just need to know the horizontal and the vertical refresh rate for the monitor. You can determine that you know, in the manual for the monitor. If you lost that or you never got it or something, then uh, you can look it up on the vendor's website and, and determine the maximum horizontal and vertical refresh rates for the monitor. And then there's uh, video cards. Now, not every video card is supported by Linux. Uh, you know, if you don't have the right video card, you can still use text mode in Linux, but that's not very satisfying. You're going to want video mode. You're going to want uh, X windows to work and all the graphical interfaces to work in Linux. So make sure you have a supported video card. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And there's audio stuff like speakers and sound cards. And again, some subset of the sound cards will work in Linux. And we'll talk about which ones are actually supported later. But Linux doesn't need any of that stuff. Linux doesn't need any audio cards or speakers to work fine. Uh, it, it'll work perfectly fine without that stuff. So uh, next what we'll do is we'll talk about where you can get information about what things are supported by Linux. Let's open up a Mozilla web browser, and what we'll do is we'll look out on the Internet for information about Linux hardware compatibility. So what I'm going to do is let's go to Google, the search engine Google here, and we'll go to Google.com, and we'll type in uh, Linux hardware compatibility. Okay, uh, if I can spell it right, compatibility. Okay, so we go to Linux hardware compatibility, we search for that, and there's all sorts of information out on the internet. What you have to be careful of is for outdated information. Actually, this first page here is quite outdated. I, I looked at it, it's a couple years old. So I don't, I don't want to go there. But, but you know, like redhat.com maintains their own list of hardware compatibility for stuff that they know works with Red Hat. And, and what's nice about this is this is a pretty authoritative list. Red Hat tests it, and, and they make sure that the hardware works with their system. So you can be pretty sure that if they say it works on Red Hat, that it's going to work on Red Hat. Okay, and uh, and that's a nice that's nice because a lot of the other sites are just you know user supported sites. They're just user reviews and things like that. Like if we go to the Linux hardware database, which is lhd.zdnet.com, uh, and we go to the Linux hardware database, this is all user reviews, but it's pretty comprehensive. Down here on the left hand side, there's a bunch of categories for various devices, everything from CD burners and cameras to scanners and TV and video cards is in this list. And if we just go to one of these, let's just go to CD burners, 
and you'll see a list of model numbers and manufacturers and there's also ratings down here on the right hand side you can see ratings for the various products okay let's just click on one of these products that has a five rating one of these Acer uh, CD burners and basically